Hi, my name's Nick. Uh, I'm the Head of Education for Young Adults at my bank and I'm here today to answer some of your money related questions and how it might be affected by the coronavirus crisis. If we go into a recession, what will it look like? How will young people be affected? How long will it last? And what industries will be affected most? Okay, well, let's talk about shapes of recessions first. Recessions come in four shapes. There is a U-shaped recession where you have the decline of the economy where it kind of goes on a gradient and then it kind of stays there for a bit and then slowly creeps back up. There's a V-shape where it falls really quickly and then gains really quickly afterwards. There's a W shape where it falls, picks up a little bit, falls, picks up a little bit. And then there's the L shape, which is it falls and it never quite goes back to where it was before. We're not quite sure what's happening because we're still in it. So we are in a recession at the moment and it's one of the deepest ones we've had in a while. Uh, so in terms of how long it will last, when you know, it, it depends on lots of factors, how long things like lockdown last, uh, whether people go back to spending after lockdown lasts as well, because spending helps after a recession. Um, and in terms of which industries will be most affected, it tends to be the ones where the jobs are or aren't. So at the moment, things like retail, um, things like um, uh, hospitality and food, those are the kind of industries that might be hit at the moment, especially things like pubs, restaurants, where they can't even open. Uh, retail less so, but to some degree, because there's been some laying off of staff. Um, and in terms of how young people will be affected, one of the things we know is that a lot of young people work in those kind of jobs. They work in, in pubs and in restaurants, so it might be that there's uh, more unemployment at the, in the short term as well. And depending on how the recovery goes, we're not sure whether we get back to where we were before. If we're in that L-shaped recession, it might be that the economy is in a worse position afterwards and never gets back to where it was before. Um, there's a lot of unknowns here, um, and I know that's not particularly useful. Uh, but the big thing to know is if you just keep an eye on what's happening and make sure that you've made sure that your personal finances are as secure as possible, that will help you ride the wave, essentially. Um, and, and it will get better uh, from here on in as the lockdown starts to release and more businesses go back and more jobs restart and, and the economy starts to get back up and going. We'll start to see that lift, but it might take a while. Um, if you remember the 2008 recession, it takes a while. So. Yeah, the average citizen, it's going to be about jobs. It's going to be about the cost of things. Credit tends to be harder to get after a recession as well because uh, companies are less uh, less likely to risk things. Uh, house prices might go down, but the ability to get a mortgage might get harder. So, I was planning on working in Easter to get out of my overdraft before I finish uni. As a student, what can I do to help me during these financially tough times? So it's difficult because when you're a student, most students work to supplement their income. Uh, I think it's two thirds of students work or have some form of income from, from that sort of side of things. Um, obviously the traditional student jobs, things like working in bars are less available now, but there are other jobs available. Um, depending on where you live in the country, I know that fruit picking, for example, it's not particularly glamorous, but there is, there is some cash to be made there if you're willing to do that kind of work. Um, the other thing is that we're starting to see new jobs kind of emerge, so there's more online stuff. There are ways that you can try and get support from the university potentially. So talk to your university, see if there are any bursary schemes, schemes that you might be able to access. Um, bursary schemes are always a good idea because they're non-repayable. So if, if the university has some help that you can take and you don't have to pay it back, that's that's always going to be great. Um, there are also external grant funders that you can look for. You go to websites like Turn To Us. And you can search there for your circumstances and it will tell you if there's anyone out there willing to give grants to people in, in your situation. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, you know, the, the things that we would traditionally say to students in terms of working in a pub or a bar, uh, less, less likely to happen until lockdown finishes. Um, the other thing I would say is if you have an overdraft and at the moment it's interest free um, and you are struggling to survive otherwise, then it is a good use of your interest free overdraft if you need to survive now. Um, paying back later obviously will accrue more interest because when you leave university, the rates go up. Um, but one thing we're saying is you should be really careful about restricting your use of a free overdraft. Uh, don't borrow from somewhere else to make sure your overdraft is okay, for example. Don't, don't borrow from a credit card if your interest-free overdraft is at 0%. Um, if you are currently paying back an overdraft and you're struggling, do call your bank. Um, you, you can ask for a freeze, a payment freeze for a few months, which might help you weather the storm. 
As a result of COVID-19, what do I do if I can't afford my rent payments or bills? Are there any specific new schemes set out to help someone struggling with this? It's a funny one, but in terms of rent, there's no scheme for renters per se. Uh, the scheme is targeted at mortgage holders, so the people that might own your property are being offered help by the government to help pay or to take a freeze in paying their mortgage payments, which might mean that they're more likely to help you out in, in return. But no, there isn't anything specific for housing. What I will say is that I, I don't think I can think of a single supplier that wouldn't want to help out if you phoned them up and said, look, I can't afford to make a payment and here's why. Um, the coronavirus situation is so global that it, this is not a, a person talking about an individual circumstance. This is a, a global situation that everyone knows about and everyone understands the hardship that it's going to cause. So I guess the, the biggest thing is if, if you're worried about paying the bills, call them quickly, tell them that you, you are worried um, and see what help they have to offer. Most will, will offer some form of help, especially utilities, electric gas companies, those kind of people, they will have schemes on hand where you can access some support if you need it. Uh, obviously, if, if you have no income coming in at the moment, there are benefits. So um, I know some people can feel a bit proud about claiming benefits. There is no need to feel proud about that at all. Um, if you need to claim benefits, universal credit is an option. If you've worked before, maybe new style JSA, um, but do make sure you check uh, whether you're entitled to anything or not. Again, turn to us where you can check the grants, you can check that benefit entitlement as well. I get the bare minimum student allowance. As a result, my student loan doesn't even cover my rent and my family can't afford to support me in any way. Where can I go for trusted support or to improve my situation? I empathise with this because that's what my university experience was like. I had to do it all myself because parents couldn't afford to, to help out that much. So. Again, the main thing that students do is they work. Most students will have a job of some kind. Um, I know that that's not very useful at the moment in terms of the normal jobs that students have, but there are other ways to make some side cash, things like surveys online. If you have digital skills, you can uh, work as a digital freelancer on things like Fiverr um, and sell design skills and that kind of stuff. Um, the other question here was, where do I go for trusted support to improve my situation? Well, first of all, not social media. Social media tends to take a piece of information and blow it up and eventually it gets so far away from the initial point of information you're not quite sure what's right and what's wrong. There are a few trusted sources I would recommend. Uh, if it's anything to do with the government, then gov.uk is the main one. Uh, it's the government's website. They'll tell you straight there what their lines are. Uh, citizen advice for advice on pretty much anything actually is a really useful source. Um, Obviously, my bank and the mix, I, I would highly recommend both of us as, as sources for this kind of stuff. But certainly, if you hear something that gives you concern or, or makes you think, oh, that's interesting, do a little bit of research. Don't just take it at face value. Um, even everything I'm saying, if you're not sure, do the research. It's a really good idea to research everything you hear. Anything on social media, you should fact check. Um, but certainly, the Gov website, Citizen Advice, the mix is, is a great source. Um, and in terms of student finance then the student finance company um, but also have a look at websites like the student room where you've got other students talking about their situation um, again do your research but a good peer network potentially one more thing to add up to the uh, the bare minimum student allowance question about you know where do I go to get cash uh, something that's mentioned a lot by students is things like Klarna for spreading costs and I think students are very savvy about Klarna and they know that the dangers of that and, and how that might happen um, do be aware that there are a lot of lenders that might be offering payment freezes and offering to increase your allowance or you know very high interest lenders offering borrowing at the moment one thing i will say is that when this is all over they're going to want that money back so make sure you're planning for that um golden rule is if the apr is high then it's going to be more expensive so the, if you are going to have to borrow and i do mean have to borrow uh, not borrow because you really want that nice new dress or that new tv um you really need to think about whether or not it's going to be payable afterwards and how much interest you're going to pay on top because at high interest rates at the end it's going to cost you a fortune. I've always struggled with managing money. If you could offer any general advice about managing money that would be amazing. Yeah we, we know they don't teach it in schools so that's, that's why we exist. Um, in terms of some of the tips number one is keep track of your money have a budget actually write down or have an app or a note somewhere that tracks what you've got coming in and what you've got going out. And make sure you're looking at those outgoings on a regular basis. If you're spending more money on something, you should be logging that. If you're lying to your budget, you're lying to yourself. So the more you can track what you're spending, um, especially your outgoings, the more control you have over whether you continue to spend 
on those outgoings. If you, for example, find you're spending too much on taxis, well, you might choose to walk one journey a week and save a little bit of money every week that will make a bigger difference. Um, the other thing about managing money is some people are very embarrassed about money and don't want to talk about it. The golden rule with money, talk about your money situation to a professional, to a friend or family member, but don't keep it silent. If you, if you don't get help with these situations, if you need it, then actually they just spiral very, very quickly. Um, in terms of a piece of information about overdrafts and debt and borrowing, read the small print. Um, make sure you know what you're getting into before you get into it. So do, do check what the terms are, how much is it going to cost you, how long are you going to be paying for. Uh, all things that are going to be relatively important for, for your pocket. Um, and if you're not sure, ask. D don't let the embarrassment of not knowing the jargon stop you from understanding exactly what it is you're signing up to. You might hear a lot about consent and people are saying yes to something, I consent to something. Or with finances, it should be informed consent. You should understand what you're saying yes to. And if you don't understand, ask again. And if you still don't understand, find someone else who will explain it to you. That company's probably gonna be better for you in the long run. So that's been my answers to the five questions I've received uh, about finances. If you want any more information about what we do, you can find our website at www.mybank.org or join us every Thursday at 4 p.m. on our social media for our live My Money Cast, where you can ask questions, get involved, uh, and I'm happy to answer any more questions people may have.